welcome to this new session on dynamic inventory optimization so uh, this is uh, uh, obviously has to be split in two parts uh, we will look at two uh, scenarios in dynamic inventory the first which is the current one which is a deterministic dynamic case uh, and uh, the second instance we will look at will be the stochastic dynamic case so let us start with deterministic dynamic inventory optimization problem so uh, uh, what do i mean by dynamic inventory so far we have looked at two of the uh, 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 two of the uh, very famous uh, inventory management problems uh, eoq model and the news vendor problem right so eoq model was a, uh, was was a case of deterministic demand uh, where the decision was taken only once if you remember uh, we said uh, uh, d is the to total demand per year and uh, we said okay even though the demand is per year we may have multiple orders but all the decisions about how, how much to order is taken once and we don't change the order size if you recall uh, that numerical example uh, we had said that uh, the total demand is uh, some thousand units per year and uh, uh, we had decided that we are going to place uh, the order quantity of 1224 uh, if i recall that right and therefore there were 8.17 orders uh, eight orders uh, roughly uh, uh, in that one year time period each order had the same order quantity of 1224 right so even though there, that was a case of multiple orders it is still considered to be uh, uh, a single single order a single decision because uh, the decision to place order of 1224 was taken beforehand because i knew the demand demand for one year was uh, 1000 units and uh, therefore the decision was taken only once that was the eoq model uh, then we looked at uh, the news vendor problem and the news vendor problem uh, uh, we looked at the demand being random variable remember uh, uh, demand uh, had uh, uh, characteristics where uh, small g was the pdf capital g was the cdf uh, mu and sigma were the mean and standard deviation of the demand right uh, so that was the news vendor problem so uh, we moved away from considering the deterministic demand to consider a stochastic demand but still the time horizon was a single day uh, in the, in the life of a, uh, in, in the life of a news vendor the news vendor was planning how many newspapers to keep in stock on that particular day uh, the retailer of diwali light was interested in uh, deciding how many diwali lights to keep in the store for that particular diwali season so it was a single season single period single day problem right now let us extend that let us extend that and consider a fairly longish time horizon still a finite time horizon but a longish time horizon not a single day but let us restrict our discussion for now for deterministic demand case okay so uh, we are going back to deterministic demand but at least now we are extending the time horizon up to some finite uh, number right uh, not not a not not a decision to be taken once but we may have to take subsequent sequential decisions so this is essentially in the realm of uh, periodic inventory review uh, there are two kinds of inventory uh, review models one is called continuous review model and there is something called periodic review uh, inventory models this is uh, the periodic review inventory model where uh, uh, we periodically every every uh, at the beginning of every period we look at uh, how much inventory we don't keep monitoring it uh, continuously and uh, 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 every time instance uh, every every uh, time period we decide whether to place the order and if we decide to place the order we will also have to decide how much to place the order for okay so uh, typically that's what we have been always arguing uh, the inventory problem is always two part problem uh, when to place the order and how much to order at the beginning of time period here we are deciding whether to place the order so that's a zero one decision and uh, once uh, the uh, decision is made to place the order how much to place which will be our q right uh, which will be our q however the solution methodology this time is going to be very different because our problem is a dynamic problem so we are going to use concepts of dynamic programming uh, uh, some of you may be aware of dynamic programming essentially uh, we are going to use bellman equation right uh, bellman equation to solve this deterministic dynamic inventory optimization problem okay uh, uh, so let us let us get started so uh, as we said uh, uh, we have always uh, uh, we have we have always uh, 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 been uh, very transparent about the references so uh, many textbooks uh, uh, have a very good description and very good explanation of dynamic programming excellent explanation of bellman equation 
uh, this particular inventory problem uh, essentially uh, the, the notations and the equations that we are going to use are from a very famous book uh, written by Wayne, Win, uh, Wayne Winston uh, a book on operations research very thick book very thick book but amazing uh, just amazing book I happen to have an India edition uh, which was published in 2007 uh, you may refer to uh, whichever edition that uh, you can get access to but uh, Wayne Winston is a very authoritative reference on whatever we are going to discuss in this session okay so let us build a mathematical model let us build a dynamic deterministic dynamic inventory optimization model using Bellman equation so let us start with assumptions and notations that's what we have done for news vendor problem that's what we will do for this case also okay so uh, as we said uh, the, the the primary highlight of this problem is that we are going to consider a finite time horizon not a single period so uh, let us say that uh, there are t time periods uh, t uh, the the subscript t goes from 1 2 3 4 5 6 all the way to capital t you may think of that as uh, 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 annual uh, uh, so uh, every month we are deciding how much to order right uh, uh, so uh, time period 1 will be month 1 month 2 month 3 month 4 all the way to capital t being 12 months uh, you can think of that as uh, uh, 50 uh, whatever weekly demand uh, and therefore week 1 week 2 week 3 week 4 and capital t will be uh, uh, the end of the end of the year uh, right uh, and let us say that uh, demand in each time period uh, d of t is dynamic but it is known right dynamic meaning it may change week 1 demand may be different than week 2 demand may be different than week 3 demand may be different than week 4 demand but we know how much is the demand a priori right kind of a restrictive assumption but it helps me explain the bellman equation in the deterministic settings which can help me then extend that to stochastic settings in the next session we will we'll slowly do that so uh, uh, so is this uh, okay let since i have already said that uh, this is a kind of a restrictive assumption let me argue that it is not such a restrictive assumption there are lots and lots of products uh, where uh, the demand uh, is uh, fairly stable fairly well known right uh, uh, for example ask any retailer right ask any ask any grocery store for example ask any grocery retailer there are certain products for which the demand is very stable very known right uh, there is not too much of variability in the demand even though the demand may fluctuate uh, month to month uh, so uh, I, I will quote uh, you know you know what what uh, products i am talking about typically for example salt right demand for salt uh, is a, is a very stable demand in indian grocery market okay you can validate that with data the demand for salt doesn't really change much it's very very inelastic okay why what do i mean by why what do i mean by inelastic it doesn't fluctuate with respect to price even if the uh, uh, the salt sellers increase the price the demand for salt is not actually going to change much because i need salt right i mean without salt how are you going to eat things uh, now even with people who have health difficulties uh, they are supposed to uh, uh, have less of salt even then right their 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 salt consumption is going to be fairly stable fairly well known and therefore this assumption that the demand is deterministic but dynamic is not really that restrictive an assumption you can think of some uh, uh, some festive seasons where the uh, uh, all the savories and uh, uh, nice things are made and therefore we use less uh, uh, we use more salt but even that is predictable right uh, once again I, I spoke about diwali lights as an example in news vendor problem uh, Diwali, I mean, Diwali season is coming up, and all kinds of snacks will be made, and uh, therefore the uh, the demand for salt will increase. But even that increase in demand is fairly stable, well known, right? It may be different than all the previous months' demand, but it is still well known. Okay, so uh, not a very restrictive assumption. Let us go ahead with this deterministic dynamic demand situation. Okay. So what happens at the beginning of each time period the organization decides whether to order and how much to order right now how will the organization decide how will the organization decide whether to order and how much to order they will look at what is the current inventory in my stock right current current inventory let us call it st 
and then uh, i will also know how much is the demand right uh, because the demand is uh, well known uh, demand is known for that particular time period right so uh, and uh, then i will i will decide how much to place the order uh, i may decide to place the order such that it is just enough for me to meet this particular time period again i will place the order next 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 time period or i may i may place the order for next two three or two or three time periods in this time period itself let that be an optimization decision we are not going to restrict that uh, the organization should order for each time period in that time period itself we are not even saying that the organization should order for the next three time periods in this time period let that be an optimization decision the other assumption is uh, uh, the orders are delivered instantaneously which means that there is no lead time remember this was the same assumption that we used in eoq so we are actually continuing with that assumption however in the dynamic setting this assumption can be relaxed but that relaxation let us not consider it here let us focus on the basic implementation of bellman equation okay so there is a lead time l so essentially what is going to happen is if you place the order q in time period t it will be delivered in uh, uh, in the t plus l time period and uh, you will get the stock in t plus l because l is the lead time right so essentially you increment the order delivery by l time periods and uh, everything shifts actually uh, that that that's not difficult to uh, incorporate in our mathematical model let's not do that however right now let us consider instantaneous delivery which means that the lead time is zero as soon as the organization places the order the supplier can deliver the product immediately in that particular week in that particular month in that particular day okay so lead time is zero okay so what are the various cost components to be considered uh, our cost components have been very uh, straightforward uh, uh, we have we have discussed each one of them in detail so uh, every time we decide to place the order every time uh, the product is ordered there is a fixed cost which is the ordering cost which is a fixed cost it does not depend on the order size okay it does not depend on the order size so uh, fixed cost uh, it will not be incurred if we decide not to place the order right uh, there is a variable cost variable cost is the cost of the product itself cost of the product itself if i decide to place uh, order for 10 products i will have to pay, pay my supplier for 10 products if i decide to place the order for 20 products i will have to pay the i will have to pay the supplier for 20 products which is typically the linear very linear cost of the product very linear price that the supplier charges me again right now just like eoq we ignored possibility of uh, discounts here also we are ignoring the possibility of discounts even though as we said at that time discounts can be considered will make the problem slightly more complicated but can be done also at the end of each time period whatever inventory is available in hand will incur a cost of holding right uh, essentially uh, all the salt packages which are not sold in this week will be stored in the store and they will incur a cost of holding now cost of holding is the cost uh, of the warehouse where these salt packets will have to be stored or it is actually the cost of capital that is locked up because i have already paid for this salt but i have not gotten revenue by selling these salt packets to my customers right so that is the cost of capital uh, carrying cost or cost of holding that will be incurred on every item that is stored in the warehouse okay so uh, 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 if i if i order too much i will have to uh, incur a cost of holding if i order too less essentially i will keep incurring cost of ordering every time right every time i place the order there is that fixed cost that i will have to pay for okay what are the notations to be used uh, uh, okay uh, one more one more assumption that we will keep uh, th this assumption is mostly to keep our uh, uh, calculations uh, in control otherwise it just too many enumerations uh, i will i'll come to uh, what do i mean by enumeration we will say that there is only limited storage capacity the store is not going to hire a separate warehouse store has a separate area which is uh, which is uh, uh, which is used as a warehouse so it has limited capacity uh, it, it is going to store all kinds of products and uh, salt can only occupy this much space uh, therefore there is very limited storage capacity which means how many units can you hold in inventory uh, is is uh, limited also uh, uh, how much to place the order for uh, from the supplier is also limited so there is limited ordering capacity the so supplier says well uh, you are expecting me to deliver the product instantaneously 
uh, I can deliver only uh, 10 packets of salt. I can deliver only 15 packets of salt instantaneously. If you ask me for more, I may need more time, right? Uh, so let us uh, let us not get into that more time, which will take us to L, which is lead time. So let us put a restriction on ordering size. Okay. So storage capacity is limited. The amount of ordering that I can do per order is also limited. All right. So let us continue with the notation. Uh, since this is a dynamic programming problem, this is a Bellman equation problem. I will have to define stage variables, state variables, and action action items, action uh, strategies. Right. Uh, so let us let us use the notations. Uh, let us say that the stages are the days or the time period. Let us say time period. Time period. It could be weeks, uh, uh, it could be uh, it could be days, it could be months, right? Uh, earlier we had used a notation capital T, so let us go with capital T, right? Uh, state variable is the inventory, inventory level at the time t. How much inventory am I carrying? Is my state variable, right? Uh, so uh, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, earlier we had said that uh, this state variable may have to consider inventory at hand plus inventory that is on order this will be particularly relevant when you have lead time right i have placed the order but that order is going to come only l time periods later so state variable may have to include the inventory that is on order separately and inventory that is in hand right in hand inventory and on order inventory those will be the uh, uh, vector right that will that will be the two components of the state variable vector here we have a single element in my state variable which is the inventory level that i am carrying at this particular time period t okay action item is the order quantity uh, order quantity uh, is the uh, is, is my action set now at could be uh, at could be anything 0 1 2 3 all the way to the storage capacity right uh, not storage capacity ordering capacity ordering capacity right ordering capacity how much can i order I can order till I hit the ordering capacity, right? Uh, I, I can order all the way there. Uh, so uh, if if I decide not to order, uh, which means order quantity is zero, that means I will not incur the ordering cost. I will incur only the uh, cost of the product. Okay. Whereas if I decide to place the order, which means my order quantity is one, two, three, four, five, six, then in addition to the cost of product, I will also incur a fixed cost, uh, which is the ordering cost. Okay, let FT and FTST, uh, FTST be the total cost of meeting the demand at stage T when we are in state ST. Okay, here I have also indirectly said there is an assumption. There is a restriction that every time period I must meet the demand. So I am excluding the possibility of shortages. How much should I place the order for? Since the demand is known, right? Since the demand is known, why would you want to incur shortages? Right. You may obviously want to order more and keep it in stock, but why would you want to meet shortage cost? Right. Uh, so it doesn't make sense. Therefore, we are assuming that in every time period, the demand must be met. So you order enough so that whatever you have stored in inventory plus whatever you are going to order together can meet the demand of that day DT. Right. So essentially, what is DT? Uh, DT, uh, the demand for this time period should be less than or equal to whatever was my ori uh, original stock plus sorry dt plus one or uh, dt plus one uh, whatever uh, uh, is the demand in time period t plus one should be smaller than whatever i am carrying inventory from the previous time period plus whatever i decide to order in this time period okay so this is this is this is what we are assuming this is what we are assuming only then i can ensure that the demand is actually met so I am trying to find the total cost of meeting the demand, total cost of being in this situation. And this situation is not difficult to attain because dt plus 1, dt, dt plus 2, dt, dt plus 3, everything is known. Even though it may be dynamic, but it is known. Okay. So I am in time period t where my state variable is st, which means that this is the amount of time, uh, this is the amount of inventory I am carrying and I need to decide how much to place the order such that the demand is met. Okay. Now, immediate cost, immediate cost, let it be represented by C of ST and AT. Uh, C of ST and AT is the immediate cost of ordering inventory when the state variable is ST. Okay, when the state variable is ST. Uh, this is needed because I am going to put all of this in uh, the Bellman equation format. 
but before we do that let us uh, increment the state variable uh, we have to lo look at the state variable so how is the state variable going to be uh, incremented in the next time period t plus 1 what is going to be my state variable okay first of all before i do that let me tell you the e sequence of event right sequence of event so this is time period this is time period so this is time period 1 time period 2 time period 3 now you place the order at the beginning of time period and you get the uh, or demand uh, you get the product delivered immediately right so this is your a1 right uh, this is your a1 and uh, you get the uh, order quantity immediately you meet the demand now after meeting the demand you may have some balance inventory at hand balance inventory at hand let that be s okay let that be uh, s1 okay s1 now at the beginning of the right at the beginning of time period 2 at the beginning of time period 2 right the closing inventory of time period 1 will become beginning inventory of time period 2 right so this will be s2 right this will be s2 to, to begin with now s2 to begin with this will be s1 to begin with and then you do all kinds of things so it will be s2 to begin with then you will place the order for a2 numbers right uh, AT, a2 is the action set in that particular time period you are in the second time period that product a2 number of products will be delivered immediately so you will have total inventory of s2 plus a2 s2 plus a2 will be your total inventory now you will uh, incur uh, you, now you will uh, uh, have to meet the demand what is the demand for time period 2 time period 2 demand is d2 so what is the closing inventory for time period 2 the closing inventory of time period 2 is i started with s2 i ordered a2 minus d2 is the demand that is met and therefore s2 plus a2 minus d2 is the on hand inventory for me at the end of time period 2 as we said earlier ending inventory of time period 2 will become the beginning of invent beginning inventory of time period 3 so this is essentially your s3 to begin with s3 to begin with then you place the order and then so on right so how do you how do you update the state variable state variable is updated as st plus at minus dt right st plus at minus dt and that is your st plus 1 what is this max now what is this max right what is max right uh, max is essentially we are saying that uh, if we are considering loss sales right if we are considering loss sales we will have to consider this max function right now we have decided that we are going to meet the demand for sure there are no lost sales there are no shortages therefore this max function need not be used so why I have kept this equation here? I have kept this equation as using the max function here because this is the same equation that I am going to use when I talk about uh, the stochastic dynamic demand, uh, stochastic dynamic inventory optimization case. All right. So, uh, uh, so uh, if if we are considering the back ordering, which means we are allowing the st plus one to become negative, then we can drop the max, and therefore st plus at minus dt. Uh, can become uh, can be zero uh, can be greater than zero can be less than zero and uh, right so anything is possible right now we are saying that st plus one is equal to st plus at minus dt and it is always going to be greater than or equal to zero right uh, therefore there is not even back ordering there is not this even can't become negative so very restrictive assumption but let us let us go ahead with that assumption right uh, as we said there is no point in not meeting the demand uh, so uh, there is enough uh, inventory uh, there is enough uh, indication that i know the demand and therefore why why incur why incur shortage costs why incur back ordering costs right so we are not considering back ordering we are not considering lost sales right uh, but uh, we are considering a simple case where uh, the on hand inventory is always greater than or equal to zero so what is the bellman equation uh, the total cost of meeting the uh, meeting the demand uh, in time period t is the immediate cost of being in st ordering at right uh, plus all the future costs plus all the future costs of meeting the demand right you know the typical bellman equation i don't have to explain to you the bellman equation now this is minimized over all the possible values of at because st plus one st plus one also depends on at so at is my decision variable is my decision variable and what is at at is essentially my order quantity in any inventory optimization problem order quantity is always going to be the decision variable right order quantity is always going to be the decision variable but however now it has a subscript t which means that in every time period i may decide to order something else 
which is unlike your eoq model where eoq model said every time you place the order you place the order for 1224 products right uh, now we are going to uh, uh, we are going to generalize that and say that in every time period i may decide to place different order sizes right even 80 could be zero i may decide to place no order in that particular time period so 80 is my time uh, decision variable and uh, this uh, total cost of me total cost of meeting the demand uh, over a but over a time horizon t can be from 1 to capital t right uh, so uh, this uh, uh, total cost uh, minimization has to happen over all the possible values of at therefore i need to decide a1 a2 all the way up to at right uh, so uh, these are my uh, these are my decision variables so uh, and you know uh, bellman equation uh, uh, environment right uh, so uh, uh, you know that uh, a1 a2 a3 essentially become they are called policies uh, what what is my ordering policy and time period one i order a1 and time period two i order a2 time period three i order a3 that that that, that becomes my policy i uh, will talk about policies and all that uh, when we talk about stochastic dynamic inventory optimization problem okay so these are all the notations that are used uh, uh, these are all the costs that are incurred and it's some co total cost minimization problem over a finite time horizon okay so let us let us take a smallish example for this let us take a smallish example for this so let us take a small time horizon of four weeks four weeks so capital t is four uh, let us say that the demand for four weeks is known it's a deterministic dynamic case so d1 is three units d2 is four units d3 is two units and d4 is four units this is known a priori i i know this beforehand right cost of ordering is four dollars whenever the order is placed if no order is placed this ordering cost will not be incurred cost of item itself uh, c which is two dollars per unit and the holding cost which is the cost of uh, keeping the item uh, in storage right uh, which is cc carrying cost it is 0.5 dollars per unit per time period okay we had put uh, restrictions on how much can i store and how much can i order so let us put some numerical values for that uh, it is uh, i i told you earlier this is only for numerical uh, calculations right i don't have to keep doing this forever therefore i decided that the maximum order size can be only five products uh, the maximum uh, storage capacity is only four products the warehouse can accommodate only four units of this salt packets and this assumption that demand has to be met in every time period therefore st plus one or st which is a state variable can only be non-zero right uh, can only be not can only be non-negative can only be non-negative it can be zero it can be positive can't be negative right can't be negative because negative would mean back order all right so uh, uh, we are going to solve this uh, finite time horizon uh, 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 dynamic uh, programming problem using what is called as backward induction so we start with time period four uh, we start with week four right uh, uh, week four problem uh, so essentially uh, uh, this is the beginning of time period one this is the beginning of time period two this is the beginning of time period three this is the beginning of time period four end of time period four right so this is where the problem ends this is where the problem ends so after that there is no planning horizon since there is no planning horizon we don't have to worry what is going to happen after the fourth time period so the problem in the fourth time period is very trivial problem for this organization organization just has to make sure that it has enough in inventory on order so that the demand is met for that particular week right this should actually be week this should uh, this is the uh, weekly demand right weekly demand so uh, uh, so uh, organization has to just uh, um, order enough so that the demand for the week four is met there is no point in carrying the inventory to the fifth time period because uh, uh, you are there is no time horizon there is no planning horizon after fifth probably you are changing uh, your your policy probably you have decided not to continue with salt in your grocery store who knows right uh, we have been decided uh, we have been told to plan for the next four weeks we will plan only for the next four weeks and there is therefore there is no point in carrying inventory beyond four weeks right uh, what are you going to do with carrying inventory right uh, so uh, therefore we need to calculate f4 s4 f4 s4 is the total cost of meeting the demand in the fourth time period when the beginning inventory is s4 right uh, beginning inventory go back where is that 
beginning inventory so this would have uh, uh, s3 was the beginning inventory of uh, uh, time period 3 similarly when you go to time period 4 there is this beginning inventory of s4 how is beginning of inventory how is how are you going to get beginning inventory of s4 it is the ending inventory of time period 3 ending inventory of time period 3 becomes beginning beginning inventory of time period 4 so uh, f4 s4 is the cost of meeting the demand in time period 4 when the starting inventory is s4 right starting inventory of fourth time period is the ending inventory or the th of the third time period now what can be the possible values of s4 go back right uh, go back how much can i how much can i store i can store four units right so uh, uh, state variable s4 cannot be more than four cannot be more than four right uh, now we have already said that uh, we have already said that uh, my state variable cannot be negative it is it can only be non negative so therefore the admissible values of uh, admissible values of s4 are 0 1 2, uh, 2 3 and 4 right because the warehouse capacity is 4 i cannot carry more than 4 units so at the end of time period 3 i could not have carried more than 4 units in my inventory and therefore i don't have to consider s4 beyond the value of 4 okay now what was the demand for time period 4 what was the demand for time period 4 demand for time period 4 was 4 units demand for time period 4 was 4 units now let us look at this i start with s4 right which could be 0 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 therefore i know the dt what is dt dt is 4 demand for time period 4 let me put d4 as 4 d4 is 4 how much should i be ordering in the fourth time period that is my a4 right that is my a4 how much should i be ordering now if my inventory is zero if my inventory is zero i need to order four units because i need to meet the demand right there is an assumption that the demand has to be met demand has to be met now since the starting inventory is zero starting inventory is zero i must order four units right i could order five units also because uh, i could order five units also because the ordering uh, can go up to five units but there is no point in saying that i will order five units because this is the last time period there is no point in ordering more than four units because four is the maximum demand. when the on hand inventory is one i need to order three products right i can order three products or four products or five products but i'm not going to do that i'm not going to do that because there is no point in ordering four or five products what am i going to do with the excess inventory nothing so don't order right because it is also going to be counterproductive because if i place the order for four products i need only three because i am i'm only i am already carrying one unit one unit from the previous time period my demand is four therefore i need to order only three products if i order four products i will have to pay for four products why should i pay for four products right because uh, there is a cost of product the supplier is going to charge me for four products why do i need to do that therefore i won't when the on hand inventory is two i need to order two products and therefore i will be able to meet the demand for four when the on hand inventory is three i need to place the order for one product only so that three plus one is four when the on hand inventory is four itself i may not have to order anything because i can meet the demand from the on hand inventory itself therefore there is no need to order anything in the fourth time period right so those are the admissible values of a4 depending on the value of s4 because there is a restriction that i must meet the demand in the fourth time period actually there is a restriction that i must meet the demand in every time period okay so uh, this is how the calculations are going to go right uh, when s4 is 0 i must order four products so a4 of 0 what is a4 uh, this is essentially a4 s4 when s4 is 0 the uh, action is to order four units and total therefore the total cost is four dollars for ordering two multiplied by four for the cost of the product two dollars per product i am ordering four products right and therefore 4 into 2 is the total cost of the product to be paid to the supplier 4 dollars is the cost of ordering right so 12 dollars if i have to order four products if i have one unit in inventory carrying over from the previous time period i need to order only three products and therefore the total cost will be 10 dollars 4 dollars for ordering 
and two into three dollars for the cost of the product. If I have two products carrying over from the previous week, I have to place the order only for two products in this time period. Therefore, the total cost of meeting the demand is four dollars for ordering, two into two dollars for actual the cost of the product. Similarly, when S4 is three, I will have to place order for only one product. Right, place the order for only one product, and therefore the cost of meeting the demand is this should be sorry, this should actually be three, this should actually be four because it is F4 S4, right? So this should be three and this should be four. Sorry for the typo. Uh, so uh, uh, ordering cost is four because I'm ordering one unit every time you place the order, the ordering cost is incurred. Two into one dollars is actually the cost of product, so six dollars. When the inventory from the previous time period itself is four, I don't have to place any order, and therefore the cost of meeting the demand, cost of meeting the demand, uh, is zero because I'm not placing any order. I'm not placing any order, therefore no cost of ordering, no cost of product, therefore zero dollars. So these are the various costs depending on what state I may find myself in. If I am in state zero. I will incur a cost of twelve dollars in time period four. If I am in state one, I will incur a cost of ten dollars. If I am in state two, S four is two, I will incur a cost of eight dollars to meet the demand in the fourth time period, and so on. Okay. So this is the fourth time period problem that we have solved. This was a kind of trivial problem because there was no future beyond time period four. We just had to ensure that fourth time period demand is met. That's all. That's all we have done. Right. So the order quantity was essentially depending on what was D4 and D4 was 4. Time period 3 problem will be a slightly involved problem because not only do I have to worry about time period 3 demand, I will have to also incur, I will have to also think about how much to carry to the time period 4 so that it helps me meet the demand for time period 4. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, uh, let us let us calculate that for time period 3 also now.